Hello everyone, in this video I'm gonna go over your homework 3 so I can give you some hints and that helps you complete your homework. So the first problem wants you to write a MATLAB function that takes the mid-range and alternating moment and torque. So the MM, MA, TM, TA would be our first set of inputs. Then the normal and shear stress concentration. So here we're just gonna take the stress concentration as inputs. We don't wanna calculate the stress concentration because that requires accessing the tables and figures, which is a little bit uh, challenging in MATLAB. Then we need to take small and large diameters of a hollow round shaft. So this MATLAB code would be compatible with hollow shaft, not solid shaft, which is a more general case. So in case of the inner diameter zero, if you set it, then you're gonna have a solid shaft. Then we have three strengths, endurance strengths, yield strengths, and ultimate strengths. Would be our input, we are gonna find factor of safety for static. We have two failure criterion, we are gonna use distortion energy or one misses, DE. Fatigue failure, we're gonna use modified Goodman, and then the overall factor of safety, which should be the minimum of the two. So in MATLAB, we can simply write mean of whatever factor of safety we have in the previous part for static and fatigue, I call it NS and NF, and then I would call the overall maybe just N. Make sure to comment every line, write a short paragraph describing what your code is, uh, about and then you could write an example of how to run the code. In the second problem we have a geared industrial roller shown in the figure that goes at 300 rpm by force F acting on 3 inch diameter pitch circle as shown. So here are force F which is acting at an angle when two gears are in contact they're gonna act as a at an angle we usually call this angle pressure angle but this angle would create two components of force for us. The tangential component here is in Z direction, so maybe we call it FZ. And then the radial component or normal component here we have FY. We don't know the magnitude of the forces, but we have some other information that we can find the magnitude of this force. So we know that the normal force that the roller acts is a distributed loading so 30 pound per inch and then we have 8 inch here and that's a normal force acting here so that would be a distributed loading in the direction of y so I can find the normal force multiplied by the length which is 8 inch here we are gonna have friction, the coefficient of friction is 0.4. So here, this gear is gonna rotate counterclockwise looking from positive X. Then the roller would rotate at counterclockwise. So there would be a reaction friction resisting. The motion would be in towards the positive Z. So let me draw it with another color here. So that's the distributed loading for my friction force. I call it FF. The magnitude would be mu n. I have n and I have mu here. That would be 0.4 n. Once I have the value of the friction force and I have the diameter of the roller, then I can find a missing value here, which is which is the fourth F. I know the summation of torques should be zero. So the torque that is caused by uh, fourth F, FZ times the radius of the gear would be the same as the resisting torque that is created by friction. So the friction times the radius of the roller. I have the value of friction force, I have the dimension, so I can find Fz, that is unknown here, and once I have Fz, I can find Fy, 
and using a static equilibrium I can find the reaction forces. So if I want to draw the free body diagram, we have I can break it into uh, two 2D planes. So I will have one plane in X and Y. It would be X and Y and the forces that I have, I have the reaction forces of at O, so that would be OY. I have the normal force, which is the distributed loading. It would be N. And then I have reaction at A. And also I have the component of force F in Y direction, which is the opposite of Fy. So I have two unknowns. Using equilibrium equation, I can find the unknown values. I can do the same thing for the other plane, x, z plane. That way I break a 3D problem into two 2D problem, which makes it easier. So I will have the reactions as well as the force of the friction. So we have x, actually the z direction, the positive z would be in the opposite direction. Let me draw it here. That would be the positive z direction. I have the reaction forces here, a, z, o, z, I have friction force, which is a distributed loading, where we know the magnitude, and also the component of Fz. So we know the values of the Fz and friction force, we can find the reaction forces, and then we can draw shear moment diagram. We have two 2D plane, therefore we need to use Pythagorean theorem to find the resultant moment. And once we find the resultant moment, then we can find our uh, diameter and a factor of safety. Pay attention that the shaft diameter is not changing. So here you're gonna have a roller. So that's a roller that is mounted on the shaft. The shaft diameter is the same. We need to find the location that the moment is maximum. We have two different planes. We can find the location of maximum moment and we are going to do our analysis based on that critical location, based on that hot zone for failure.